mostly women and children who are currently seeking asylum in a variety of countries in order to escape persecution. If you are not aware of their history, since 2011, it's estimated that around 9 million have fled their homes and are living in squalid conditions in various refugee camps or on the move trying to locate adequate sustenance for themselves and their families. The plight of our Syrian brothers and sisters is similar to the plight of the separatists or the pilgrims beginning in the late 16th century who left their homeland under duress, eventually making a 65-day journey across the Atlantic in 1620. During that first winter, 50% of them perished. It was because of a Native American tribe, their compassion for and their patience with these religious refugees, that the rest of the group survived to see a bountiful harvest the following year. One might say that it was because of the hospitality of this, these compassionate, patient, great, great, gracious Native American hosts that we have a United States of America at all. Here's the embarrassing part for someone who grew up in the Congregational Church. While the surviving pilgrims were grateful, certainly, and a handful of public leaders and church officials declared little Thanksgiving holidays, it took us over 240 years to be thankful as an entire nation for the blessing of this hospitality. And I know that the story of Thanksgiving that got told in countless ways, plays and presentations and history projects, and even Sunday school when I was growing up, never mentioned gratitude to those native people for the very survival of our forefathers and foremothers. Even today, Thanksgiving celebrations in America, said so eloquently by you, my friend, are about gluttony and not gratitude. They are about shopping and not stewardship. They're about hoarding and not hospitality. They are about inter independence and certainly not interdependence. We were refugees and someone took us in. And not just took us in, but helped us to set up homesteads instead of camps. Not just allowed us to pass over their borders but taught us how to get settled, fed us, clothed us, helped us find meaningful work. Yes, we participated in that. Most refugees want to work. They want to contribute. They want to be educated. They're eager to make a new life and a new community that respects them. But our gracious hosts made it possible. That is what we should be grateful for. Perhaps this nation's fear of receiving new refugees, Syrian refugees, other refugees, has its foundation in the rest of that story as, as refugees, our story. In that case, we did take over, didn't we? We did force our religion, our language, our cultural ways upon those who hosted us. We did bring diseases that our hosts had never seen, for which they had no cure. We did overtake our hosts, impose our ways, acted desp despicably as guests, and it took us almost 400 years to apologize. Some of us are still working on that. Perhaps when we look at those Syrian refugees and others, we see ourselves and worry that our sin will come back on us tenfold. So my Thanksgiving offering today is not a prayer from a prayer book of my own tradition, but a personal prayer of confession and a personal apology to those my people have wounded. Will you pray with me? Creator God, God of winds and fields and handcrafted beings, look upon us, your global children, who in your wondrous design laugh and cry and grow and bleed.
the same. Surely we have offended you with our warring madness. Surely we have sickened you with our hedonistic ways and lack of gratitude. Surely we have forgotten our tender roots, our vulnerable beginnings, and have built ourselves up as legends in our own minds. Surely we have abused and scarred our Mother Earth that feeds us, and alienated and shamed the human midwives who have birthed us into abundant life. Bring us to new awareness of our affliction and offer us a balm of peace and humility to cure us. Move us to appreciate one another more deeply, to lower our pride in the face of one another's holiness, to ask questions before making assumptions, to speak to one another in respect and love, and never ever take one another for granted. This we ask in the name of the one source of all life.